the megalodon is one of the largest predators that ever existed on planet Earth. This shark still arouses people's interest to this day. For a long time, the megalodon was thought to be extinct. However, in the year 2013, a documentary aired on the Discovery Channel, which stated that this oceanic predator might be alive and had caused the disappearance of a fishing boat off the coast of South Africa. So, is the megalodon extinct several million years ago, or is it still hiding in the depths of the ocean? In this video we will tell the whole truth about megalodon and try to separate fact from fiction. The earliest remains of the megalodon date back 20 million years. For 17 million years after that, this creature was the main inhabitant of the world's oceans. And so it went on until the alleged disappearance of the megalodon. The megalodon was a truly enormous predator, reaching up to 18 meters in length. To get an even better idea of the size of the megalodon, next time you go outside, walk up to any five-story house and look at its height. This is the average length of a megalodon. For millions of years this predator has terrified all the inhabitants of the world's oceans. This is evident when you look at its teeth. On the right you see a tooth that belonged to the white shark, which is the largest shark species alive today. On the left is a tooth that once belonged to a megalodon. The word megalodon means big tooth. Fossils of teeth can give a lot of information about what exactly the biggest predators in the ocean ate. With the body size that the megalodon had, the predator needed a large amount of food. The diet of the megalodon included whales, large fish, and possibly other smaller sharks. To prove this theory, scientists have discovered a large number of fossil remains. For example, the bones of huge whales that lived at the time of the megalodon. Traces of huge teeth were seen on these bones. Only creatures of gigantic size, such as the megalodon, could have left such marks. Just imagine how huge the mouth of a creature would have to be to be able to grab a whale. What if this predator still exists? But more about that later. Scientists speculate that the megalodon could open its jaws for more than 3 meters. That is, two people standing on top of each other could fit between the upper and lower jaws. The jaws were covered with almost 300 huge teeth. Such facts have given scientists the right to believe that the megalodon was one of the most powerful predators that ever lived on the planet. So what exactly did this intimidating creature look like? For a long time, scientists believed that the megalodon looked like a great white shark, only much larger in size. The great white shark was thought to be a descendant of the megalodon, but today researchers hold a different opinion. The megalodon belonged to another shark species and was the last representative of that species. Compared to the great white shark, the nose of the megalodon was shorter and its fins were longer. The latter fact allowed for the control of a torso of enormous size. Megalodon inhabited waters of tropical and subtropical climates all over the world. Teeth belonging to the predator have been found by researchers on every continent of the planet except Antarctica. Virtually all of the megalodon remains that have been found are teeth. Researchers believe that this predator had constantly changing teeth and throughout its life. Depending on what the shark ate, it lost a certain number of teeth every two weeks. Gradually new teeth appeared in their place. Over the course of its life, up to 40,000 teeth grew in the mouth of the megalodon. Thus, the teeth went to the bottom of the ocean and over time, some of them became fossils. The teeth were also the strongest part of the megalodon skeleton. Researchers also found vertebrae of the predator. Gradually, scientists are finding more and more fossils related to the megalodon, so over time we will increasingly understand exactly what one of the most fearsome predators on the planet looked like. So far we only have fossil finds, as no one has seen the megalodon in person. But why? After all, the internet is full of evidence of the existence of this giant shark these days. Researchers believe that the predator went extinct about two and a half million years ago, when there was a period of global cooling. Scientists speculate that almost a third of the planet's large marine animals, including the megalodon, disappeared at that time. The warm waters in which the shark lived were getting colder and colder, 
so most of the creatures that the megalodon hunted simply disappeared. According to another theory, the cooling of the world's oceans has greatly reduced the level of the ocean, which was an obstacle to the continuation of the genus Megalodon. Giant sharks are used to breeding in shallow coastal waters where the babies cannot be caught as prey by other marine predators. However, because of the drop in ocean levels, these places were simply destroyed, and the Megalodon could not continue the lineage. But what about all sorts of information about the existence of the giant shark these days? Scientists are unanimous on this point. The megalodon is extinct, and there is no reason to believe that it is still hiding in the deep waters of the world's oceans. Otherwise, new teeth marks would have been found on the prey of the megalodon. In addition, the temperature in the deep ocean, where the megalodon could have gone undetected, is too low for this species of shark. That's why all the news about the discovery of the megalodon is not true. In the year 2013, a documentary aired on the authoritative Discovery Channel, which stated that this oceanic predator might be alive and had caused the disappearance of a fishing boat off the coast of South Africa. At the time, many viewers believed this information, but it was a pseudo-documentary. That is, the information in the film was fictional, which was warned about in the beginning. Not all viewers noticed this and perceived the film as fully documentary. Modern airplanes are incredibly complex machines about which we, ordinary passengers, know little. In this video, you'll find out what actually happens when you flush an airplane toilet, under what circumstances an airplane's wings can fall off, and other secrets of modern aviation. Number 1. What happens if the engines fail during the flight? For passengers who do not know much about aviation, and they are the majority, this question is one of the first. And it's not surprising, because if the engines don't work, the plane should just fall down. To begin with, complete failure of aircraft engines is a very rare occurrence. But even in this situation, the aircraft is able to make a successful landing simply because of its aerodynamic properties. The most striking episode with the failure of all engines occurred in the year 1982, when a plane carrying more than 250 people was caught in a cloud of dust from a volcanic eruption over Indonesia. As a result, all four engines stopped working, but despite this, the pilots managed to land the plane at the nearest airport and avoid casualties. Let's do a little voting in the comments. If you have two options, fly a plane or take the train, which would you choose? Write your choice in the comments. Number 2. What happens when you flush an airplane toilet? This question rather interests people walking on the ground over which planes fly. Is it possible that someone's waste products will fall on you from the sky? The interesting thing is that this was a very possible situation before the 1960s. At that time, including in many large high-altitude passenger planes, the so-called open dump system was used. A pipe was extended from the toilet over the side of the plane. To prevent depressurization of the cabin, two valves were used at the end of this pipe. Except for the last detail, the whole system was like a toilet in an old train carriage i.e., feces just flew overboard. Give me a like if you didn't expect it to be possible. Fortunately, technology has not stood still when it comes to airplane toilets. Those who at least occasionally fly on airplanes are familiar with the characteristic loud sucking sound that occurs when you press the flush in an airplane toilet. In most modern aircraft models, this vacuum system is used. All waste products are literally sucked in under the pressure of air and with the participation of a small amount of water. Then everything goes into a special tank on board the plane, and the tank is cleaned on the ground after landing. This is done by special employees serving the aircraft. As a continuation of the toilet theme, we will answer the question of how and where airplane pilots go to the bathroom. Pilots are also living people and their bodies also have natural needs. When flying, the pilot can rely a lot on the computer system that controls the plane. But that does not mean that the pilot can just get up and go to the bathroom. There is a special procedure. When one of the pilots goes to the restroom, a stewardess is sure to enter the cockpit and wait for the departed pilot to return. This happens in case of an emergency. If suddenly one of the pilots goes to the restroom and the one remaining in the cockpit gets sick, for example, and passes out. 
Number 3. Can an airplane's wings break or fall off in midair? The answer to this question should begin with the fact that modern airplanes don't have two wings, but one. Yes, what you see from different sides of the aircraft is the same big wing. Can this wing break? The answer is no. You can easily find several videos on YouTube, where the airplane wing is bent almost at right angles as a test, and it does not break. You have to understand that there are simply no conditions in the sky in which a wing would bend this way, even in the most severe turbulence. And by the way, it's because the plane has one wing that the seats next to the wing are the least shaky. You can keep this in mind in the future when choosing seats in the cabin. Number 4. Can a plane go down because of turbulence? This is probably the scariest word for people who are afraid to fly. Turbulence, or simply jolting, is an absolutely normal phenomenon in aviation. Why is this happening? Airspace can be compared to the road, when you drive a car on an uneven surface, you are shaken. There are air currents in the sky instead of pits, warm and cold. The junction of these air currents is where the turbulence occurs. By the way, turbulence occurs constantly during the flight, but as a rule, it is so weak that passengers simply do not feel it. Perceptible shaking in the cabin is noticeable only in strong turbulence. Modern airplanes are designed in such a way that even very strong turbulence cannot cause a fall. But you can be injured if you stand or sit unbuckled during the jolt. Therefore, it is best to remain strapped in at all times during the flight. Number 5. What happens if lightning strikes the plane? Indeed, the lightning looks intimidating. And what happens to an airplane when a lightning strike occurs nearby, or even strikes it? In fact, modern aircraft will not be harmed by lightning. In the vast majority of cases, even if lightning strikes an airplane, the passengers inside won't even notice it. The material that makes up the airplane shell completely protects the passengers sitting inside from any exposure to lightning. In very rare cases, lightning can de-energize the plane, but then the pilots reset the electronics on board and the flight continues as normal. Birds can do much more damage to an airplane than lightning. A bird hitting an airplane's turbine can cause the engine to malfunction or even catch fire. Of course, this can only happen at low altitude, for example, immediately after takeoff. This is why airports use noise generators or helicopters to scare away birds. The most striking case of bird strikes occurred in the year 2009, when a plane, with 150 people on board, collided with a flock of birds while taking off from New York. As a result, all of the plane's engines failed. The pilots did not have time to make an emergency landing at the airport because they were at a very low altitude. As a result, the crew commander landed the plane directly on the Hudson River, actually in the heart of New York City. Thanks to the professional actions of the crew, all passengers were rescued. By the way, the movie Miracle on the Hudson, starring Tom Hanks, was released a few years ago about these events. Number 6. Food on airplanes is an interesting topic of its own. For example, what do pilots eat? The fact is that the pilots have a separate menu with several dishes to choose from. As you know, an airplane is flown by two pilots, and before or during the flight, they eat completely different dishes. This is a mandatory requirement to avoid a situation where both pilots were poisoned by some food and thereby endangered the safety of the passengers. By the way, due to the fact that computer systems can control the aircraft for some time, the pilot can eat right at the controls of the aircraft. As for the food for the passengers, it depends on each individual airline, but there is an interesting fact that our usual foods at altitude can take on a different flavor. Because our receptors work differently when flying in an iron box at an altitude of 10,000 meters than they do on the ground, and some foods that we love may seem unpalatable. Conversely, what we can't stand on the ground may seem delicious on an airplane. Number 7. Are pilots afraid to fly? The answer to this question is pretty obvious, of course not. Because the most important quality in a pilot's job is stress tolerance. A person who is afraid to fly simply cannot become a professional pilot. And you have to understand that the more you fly, as an ordinary passenger, the more relaxed you start to feel about flying. Even if you are not initially reassured by the fact that, 
according to statistics, the plane is the safest means of transportation. In the middle of 2021st year a group of researchers managed to find the mysterious wreckage at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, in a place that is known throughout the world as the Bermuda Triangle. There is a possibility that the wreckage belongs to the infamous Link-19, a group of five U.S. Air Force bomber aircraft. This incident, which occurred at the end of the year 1945, is considered one of the most mysterious disappearances in history. Five torpedo bomber planes were making a training flight off the coast of Florida. A few hours later communication with the crews was lost, and all five aircraft and 14 crew members disappeared without a trace. Among the surviving conversations of the pilots are these words, everything looks strange, even the ocean. A rescue plane with 13 people on board, which was sent to rescue, also goes missing a few hours later. What happened to all the aircraft and crew members remains a mystery to this day. If the finds made by researchers recently did belong to Link-19, it might lead to an explanation for the mysterious disappearance that occurred 70 years ago. This mysterious story is only one of many that have occurred in that part of the Atlantic Ocean called the Bermuda Triangle. In the last century alone there have been dozens of mysterious disappearances of planes and ships, and if you take the time span of several centuries, the number of cases exceeds hundreds. In this video we will tell you about the most mysterious cases that occurred in the Bermuda Triangle. The Disappearance of the Ship Cyclops In the year 1918, a U.S. Navy ship sailed from Brazil to the shores of the United States. The ship was called the Cyclops, and at the time it was the largest and fastest ship of the U.S. Navy. It had 309 men on board and carried thousands of tons of cargo. And this huge ship disappeared into the waters of the Bermuda Triangle without a trace. Neither human remains, nor the wreckage of the ship, nor any details of the cargo have yet been found. And it is known that in 1918, Cyclops managed to go almost halfway. It left the port of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil and then made a stop on the island of Barbados. The ship was never seen again after leaving Barbados. In addition to the absence of wreckage, the fact that the ship did not give any distress signals adds to the mystery. A U.S. Navy spokesman at the time called the Cyclops incident the most mysterious incident in American naval history. Of course, the sheer number of mysterious details of the disappearance gave rise to many theories, up to and including a giant octopus inhabiting the waters of the Bermuda Triangle and taking over the entire ship. This version is unlikely to have anything in common with the truth, but even a hundred years later the disappearance of the Cyclops ship is shrouded in mystery. The Disappearance of a DC-3 Passenger Plane Another mysterious occurrence often mentioned by proponents of mystical theories about the Bermuda Triangle. In the year 1948, the American passenger plane Douglas DC-3 was flying from San Juan, Puerto Rico to Miami, USA. There were 32 people on board, including crew members. The plane flew to its destination, but stopped communicating less than an hour later. No distress signals were given by the crew. There is a theory that the crew may have had problems determining their position during the flight, and as a result, the aircraft went off course, and after the fuel ran out, the crew was unable to make a successful landing on the water. Subsequently, there was scattered information about found parts of similar aircraft, but it was not possible to establish exactly that the findings belonged to the missing DC-3. One way or another, as of today all the passengers and the plane itself are officially considered missing. The Disappearance of a Passenger Plane Star Tiger In the year 1948, another mysterious disappearance of a passenger plane occurred in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. This time it was a British airline. The plane called Star Tiger took off from Lisbon, Portugal and was heading to Bermuda. There were 31 people on board. The first part of the flight was successful, and the crew made a stopover in the Azores in the Atlantic Ocean. The ship then sailed to its destination and disappeared just inside the Atlantic, which is attributed to the Bermuda Triangle. Immediately after the news of the disappearance a search operation was organized. More than 20 military aircraft participated in the search, but no passengers or crew wreckage were found. The investigation conducted by British authorities concluded that the crew of the plane was very experienced, 
the craft itself was in good condition, and some minor malfunction could not have caused the crash. The final conclusion of the experts contained the following phrase, what happened in this case will never be known, and the fate of Star Tiger will remain an unsolved mystery. To this day nothing is known about the fate of this plane. The Disappearance of a Cargo Tanker In the year 1963, an American freighter with 39 crew members sailed from a port in Texas to Florida. Along the way the vessel was crossing the waters that are referred to as the Bermuda Triangle. Two days of sailing passed quietly, and the crew relayed their coordinates. What happened next is not fully known. There is a theory that the ship sank in the Straits of Florida. However, after 20 days of searching, all that was found were a few pieces of wreckage and some salvage, but no trace of the ship or any of the crew. A subsequent investigation revealed major problems with the design and condition of the ship. The owners of the ship were officially found responsible for the incident. However, the fact that the lengthy search operation could not find any significant traces of the ship or any of the crew, gives reason to supporters of the version of the Bermuda Triangle attribute this incident to the number of mysterious mysteries. The Disappearance of Two U.S. Navy Ships In the year 1941, a U.S. Navy vessel called the Proteus sailed from San Tomas Island in the Caribbean Sea to the west coast of the United States. Passing through the Bermuda Triangle, the ship with its 60 crew members and cargo disappeared without a trace. One would assume that a German submarine was to blame. However, there was no information about the location of German submarines in that region. But not only this makes the disappearance of the Proteus mysterious. A month later, a similar U.S. Navy ship, the Nereus, also disappeared under mysterious circumstances while sailing the same route. History repeated itself, 60 crew members, the ship itself, and the cargo had simply vanished. The Disappearance of a Huge Tanker in the year 1967, a cargo tanker called the Silvio Lassa disappeared without a trace in the Bermuda Triangle. The ship was of enormous size, nearly 200 meters long, and carried tons of cargo as well as 37 crew members. Although rescuers were able to find a lifeboat from the ship after it disappeared, none of the crew or the ship itself were found. The Disappearance of Joshua Slocum Joshua was a famous American traveler and navigator. It was he who made the first solo circumnavigation of the globe in history. Slocum was considered a very experienced navigator. In the year 1999 he sailed on a route from North America to South America and supposedly disappeared in the area of the Bermuda Triangle. No trace of the traveler or the yacht itself has been found. There have been suggestions that Slocum may have died of natural causes during the voyage, because the traveler was 65 years old at the time. It could also have collided with a large ship whose crew simply might not have noticed Slocum's small boat. Anyway, supporters of the Bermuda Triangle theory consider this incident to be one of those that support the theory. However, mysterious disappearances occurred in the Bermuda Triangle even before the 20th century. In the year 1880, a British Royal Navy ship with a crew of almost 300 disappeared without a trace in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. In England, the incident was discussed at length, but despite the search, it was impossible to find the ship or any of the crew. In the 19th century, the topic of the Bermuda Triangle anomalies was not yet so widely discussed as in the 20th century, the reason for this are dozens of cases of disappearing planes and ships without a trace. What could have caused this phenomenon? There are many mystical versions, ranging from a giant octopus to aliens in Atlantis at the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle. But despite the many mysterious and unexplained disappearances, the Bermuda Triangle is not recognized by official authorities as an anomalous zone of the Atlantic Ocean. There have been numerous scientific studies that have concluded that the number of accidents in the Bermuda Triangle does not exceed the average number of disasters in other parts of the ocean. Scientists tend to believe that the true cause of disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle is the climatic and natural features of the region, such as abrupt weather changes, a large number of cyclones and storms, as well as shoals and methane gas emissions from the ocean floor. In addition, this section of the Atlantic Ocean is heavily used by ships and aircraft. There are many ship and air routes from Europe to Latin America, from South America to North America, and vice versa. 
All this suggests that sooner or later all mysterious disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle will be solved. The group of researchers who discovered the possible wreckage of the disappeared Link 19 is also inclined to this version. One member of the search team stated that he would rather believe in fabulous creatures like the Tooth Fairy than in a paranormal explanation for the mysterious disappearance of planes in 1945. Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. Do you believe in a paranormal explanation for the Bermuda Triangle phenomenon, or do you think it's just fiction? Planes, including passenger planes, have been actively flying over the North Pole for a long time. But on the other side of the planet things are completely different. In this video we will tell you why no planes fly over Antarctica and what mysterious secrets this continent hides. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, be sure to click on the red subscribe button and the bell next to it to always know about new videos. So, let's understand why no planes fly over Antarctica. There are several reasons for this. First of all, it is the weather conditions. Some of the most extreme temperatures on the planet were recorded just in Antarctica. Obviously, it's not the most welcoming place to visit. People who come here to work, as a rule, take a month-long training course, because the temperature can drop to minus 90 degrees Celsius. By comparison, the temperature in the freezer hardly drops below minus 20. It is better to be properly prepared for such conditions. It's only natural that the few people who come to Antarctica are scientists, doing research. Tourists are not eager to visit this place. That's why a large number of planes don't need to fly here. Moreover, for aircraft it is almost an impossible task. Even if the ship is not going to take off or land in Antarctica, but simply to fly over it. Many of those who have flown on an airplane in sub-zero temperatures have seen the aircraft treated with a special liquid, de-icer, before takeoff. Its amount and, consequently, its cost depends on the size of the aircraft and how cold it is. Just imagine how much of this fluid is needed to treat an airplane before it flies over the coldest point on the planet. The second reason not to fly over Antarctica is poor visibility. This phenomenon in itself is not easy for pilots, and in such extreme conditions, as in Antarctica, it becomes dangerously dangerous. It is critical for pilots to maintain visual contact with the ground during flight. However, when everything around you is white, it is quite difficult to keep your bearings and it can be deadly. In addition, we should not forget about the storm. In Antarctica, it is incredibly dangerous to operate an aircraft in such conditions. The third reason is the lack of infrastructure. In order for planes to take off, land, and navigate, there must be special points on the ground where dispatchers help to do this. Plus, airplanes must have emergency landing capabilities for the duration of the flight. Flying over Antarctica is like flying over the ocean. Only over the ocean is much better visibility and other conditions, and in the case of an emergency landing in Antarctica there is simply nowhere to do it. The fourth reason is navigation. The magnetic field in Antarctica can interfere with the aircraft's navigation systems, and this is vital for making the flight. In addition, as I said earlier, there is the problem of control rooms. They play an important role on the ground, helping pilots stick to their route, warning of approaching storms and other weather troubles. In Antarctica, there are simply no such stations, for obvious reasons. So why do planes fly over the North Pole, but not over the South, that is, over the Arctic? There is also a passenger route through the North Pole. For example, from America to Asia, but first, the number of such flights is small and airlines are trying to take other routes. But when a passenger plane flies over the North Pole, it will be in the sight of air traffic controllers on the ground the whole way. While flying over Antarctica, pilots will move blindly. In addition, there are several airfields near the North Pole that can be used for an emergency landing. There are no such options when flying over Antarctica, which further increases the danger. This is why Antarctica is still a giant no-fly zone. However, this is not the only reason why Antarctica is a mysterious continent. Looking at the endless landscape covered with ice, 
it is difficult to imagine that underneath it there is something else. Over the past 50 years, using radar, about 400 lakes have been discovered under the ice of Antarctica, they are located under several kilometers of ice. Only now are there opportunities for scientists to really explore these lakes and what lives there. Microorganisms and creatures that have managed to survive under kilometers of ice, in the absence of sunlight and nutrients. What will be found in these lakes in the near future is anyone's guess. Bloody Waterfall This is the name of the amazing phenomenon discovered in Antarctica more than a hundred years ago. No need to be scared, it has nothing to do with real blood. At first, researchers attributed this phenomenon to red algae. But later it was found that the reason for this is microorganisms living in one of the subglacial lakes. Thanks to them, the water in this lake is rich in iron oxide. Water seeps out through small cracks in the ice and, as a result, we can see a similar picture. Volcanoes Despite the cold, there are several volcanoes in Antarctica. The most famous of them is Erebus. It is the southernmost active volcano on the planet. Scientists have been observing this volcano in detail for the past 50 years. There is a lava lake in the crater of Erebus. Mount Erebus is located at the intersection of faults in the Earth's crust and is one of the most active volcanoes on the planet. Powerful ejections of deep gases periodically occur from these faults. Due to severe weather conditions and remote location, scientists cannot visit this volcano very often. However, during rare expeditions they manage to discover living organisms that live inside the volcano. Ancient Meteorites Thanks to Antarctica's very cold and dry climate, meteorites that fell in the area many years ago are perfectly preserved. Plus, they are easier to spot because they stand out strongly against the snowy landscape. Over the past 50 years, scientists have found several tens of thousands of meteorites here. The territory of Antarctica is still poorly explored. This has given rise to a huge number of mystical stories about the continent, from mysterious pyramids to space aliens. Every year mystical enthusiasts find some signs of extraterrestrial life in Antarctica on satellite images. Needless to say, there is no scientific evidence for this theory yet. Also some people believe that it is in Antarctica, under kilometers of ice, hides the lost Atlantis. According to their version, the mystical city was located there in the distant past, when the territory of Antarctica was not yet covered by ice. Proponents of the theory believe that this was a region with a warm tropical climate, and that Atlantis was located here, or if not Atlantis, then another advanced civilization. One way or another, scientists only have to confirm or disprove this theory in the future. So far, there is simply no data on this. Some believe that the Nazis had secret bases in this area. There they allegedly conducted crazy experiments and possibly made contact with aliens. And this is not all of the conspiracy theories concerning Antarctica. But so far none of the theories has found scientific substantiation. Because of its inaccessibility and harsh climate, the territory of Antarctica will remain poorly explored for years or even decades to come, which will undoubtedly generate more and more hoaxes and conspiracy theories. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And also subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to always know about new videos, and leave your comments below this clip.